Migda as an installation often is, is experienced by people as something uncanny at the very least or dangerous in the worst case but then I always noted in exhibitions how children just love it because it's just the thing that moves and does something interesting and looks like an animal and so sometimes in the exhibition you find these parents that are like we're looking so worried at the installation and then the children want to go there and touch it and see oh, look this and that amygdala is it wasn't a, a complete experiment really i just had this inspiration from mark fisher capital realism book where he says that um, I'm paraphrasing, he talks about um, rituals and say when, when rituals turn to just mechanical or mechanistic activities, then that's, that's the sign that the capitalism has arrived and destroyed everything. Or you see people just crumbling through the ruins of what used to be rituals. And, um, and so I thought, okay, I, there is something there, there is something about the ritualism, there is something about capitalism that like, brings the things together. So long story short, I just spent the rest of the two years uh, investigating rituals both in animistic societies and in religious societies. Uh, but in animistic uh, societies, the ritual does not stop at the cutting but actually the healing of the wounds is also part of the ritual and eventually if you heal your wounds in a certain way with the help of, of the other people in your tribe then your body changes like the, the morphology of your skin changes and yeah I personally found that a lot more profound as a, as a ritual um, and so I, I just started thinking about okay Maybe I make a machine that tries to cut its own skin and use AI to learn that. And I thought that would be a pretty good portrait of capitalist society that we live in. But it's curious how just making something that looks a bit uncanny and it has a knife mm -hmm. and is trying to cut its own white skin makes a lot of white people uncomfortable. Or sometimes you get people uh, get a bit hypnotized by the movements of the robot. That's also quite nice and it's something that I did not expect before. But of course, once you arrive and you see amygdala, it's moving because it has this organicity and, and because it's never really repeating the same thing because it keeps learning over and over. And it does become kind of a ritual watching this ritual. In the beginning, I was quite wary of anthropomorphizing the machine they, they, are, they are they are artwork so yeah not a product of, of my art but rather artwork in themselves um, and um, the nice thing is that they are artwork that do things that you sometimes cannot expect so that's that's interesting 
So in, in, when we are performing, they are indeed partners. Again, I want to stress, they are not human and they are not living partners. They are machine and they will stay machine forever. When, if you don't turn them on, they are dead. <laughs> uh, that's important to remember.